G'day gamers! In today's World of Warships video, I will be telling you the four types of turtlebacks that we have depending on their performances. I'm doing this video not only because of the poll that I did two months ago, but also to make sure that anyone who watches this video won't make a mistake like I do in clan battles and get absolutely blasted. What? You need a quick explanation on what it is? Okay, uh, sloped armor. It improves the effective thickness of this layer, and if angled enough, it may cause shells to ricochet. So basically, the turtleback is a layer of sloped armor to enhance citadel protection. This is the graph I made here uh, for your comprehension. Starting with the strongest turtleback, only the German battleship line can claim this title. Not only is this turtleback heavily armored, the wide hulls enable the sloped armor to be angled further than 60 degrees. Some ships of this line also have underwater citadels, which is basically impossible to hit in close range. You might see a couple lucky citadels from range, or like if you're playing Stalingrad maybe, or CV bombs, but that's not what the turtleback was designed for. I'm sure the GK really enjoyed that. Then, what about other wide battleships, like the Italian battleships? Their turtleback is slightly different, uh, despite being wide enough for their sloped armor to bounce shells. Its greatest flaw is in the thickness of this sloped armor, making it vulnerable to battleship guns at close range. It still helps against heavy and a couple large cruisers, however. Only four Italian battleships are in this category the Lepanto, Colombo, Marco Polo, and Giuseppe Verdi. These two are the tech trees and those are the premiums. For the premiums, you can easily blast them because they have an above water citadel, while the tech tree ones have an underwater sit. As a result, when you drive by an Italian battleship, you have to be aiming really close to the waterline. The next turtle back is usually for normal battleships where the armor doesn't quite look like a turtleback, but a camel hump? <laughs> I guess. It's not designed to bounce shells, but to have more effective armor against it. As a result, it is still possible for a powerful shell to bypass the armor and hit the citadel. This turtleback layout is the most common among all battleships in the game. The French have it. The Japanese have it, and so do almost every single low tier BB. Alright, then which one's better? The conventional turtleback or the Italian one? I asked a friend uh, who had Marco Polo to help me out on this one. Thanks, Shino, by the way. Uh, he's our test subject today. Uh, so here's a clip. Yes. Sacrifice. Oh! <laughs> okay! Okay! And as a result, I would say the Italian turtleback is generally better, since only shells larger than 380mm will have a chance of blasting it. And let's not even mention the fact that the Pontes and Colombo have underwater citadels, which is even more difficult to hit. But on the other hand, uh, the strongest conventional turtleback, which is the title goes to Republic, uh, only needs 305mm guns to blast it, pretty much. And that brings us to the last type of turtleback, the kind that neither has enough angled bounce shells, nor is it capable of blocking shells of a large caliber. French and Dutch cruisers are a prime example here. Having 25mm turtlebacks means they're vulnerable to more than 95% of battleships and their slightly angled armor makes it more like a fraud as a turtleback. Napoli is also one of these cruisers, uh, but a bit better. Her turtleback gets overmatched by 457 shells, but the angle is good enough to often bounce shells lower than that caliber. Meanwhile, we have St. Vincent, the meta battleship in COTS, which is also this category. Her saving grace is that her citadel is underwater, and 
enemy dispersion lets her get away with it. At the end of this video, I'd like to give you a small cheat sheet if you ever need it. Uh, it's what I've got after testing for a long time. If there's anything you feel like that's wrong, uh, I'm welcome to suggestions for improvement. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. This is a very delayed video due to many reasons, like school, uh, printing wifi's with my GPU, and casting cough recently. Although I have to admit, they're all really fun stuff, and I enjoy them a lot. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next video.